All right, so, next day. Where did we get up to? Well, we got one of the reins drawn out. Needs a bit of straightening, needs to be actually shaped. So that's the outer surface, so it needs to be bent down and across. There's a little bit of finished forging. Um, I want to try and refine that repair to the, the split again, just to tidy it up a bit. Doesn't look quite perfect. Um, the other rein, the nib is mostly drawn out. The crack that had it developed during straightening has been completely sealed off. Um, so I need to draw out the reins. Uh, this is roughly how that crack started out. So you can see it's quite a massive thing. Um, this is why you don't leave sharp corners um, in forgings, um, get rid of sharp corners on things that you are forging, such as files, rasps, and so on, because sooner or later that's going to happen. Um, now this is wrought iron, so it's a much more controlled, more of a, a tearing sensation thing, um, but with tool steels, that's how cracks propagate. They start at a weak point, corners are weak points, and that's where it's going to come from. So that's what we're up to on that. Um, the hammer blank is cut, ready to go. Um, the tool steel facings are ready to go. So what I might do is whilst I'm working on these, I will get this up to temperature, forge weld on the face plate, begin forging out the rough shape. Um, so I've got most, so I can figure out where I want to punch the eye because the eye is a little bit out of the balance of the, of the piece. So what I might do is punch it for center on the existing piece. And then when you weld on the face plate, that will skew things. No, actually I skew things the wrong way. So I have to punch after I put the face plate on so I can figure things out. Um, so that the eye actually ends up a bit further forwards. Um, so that the peen ends up longer. Anyway, that's something to figure out as we go. So that's ready to go. Um, and that will take us through the first of the two tools that I want to make. Um, for those of you following along, you'll have noticed that um, Black Bear Forge um, linked into my first video on this project. Um, so a big shout out to John. Um, thank you for that. Um, he's made the anvils. Um, so I'll endeavor to make those at some point in the near future. They'll be made out of wrought iron as well. I may end up having to um, weld together some axle segments or something. Um, just to get enough mass. Um, and then I might touch base with John and see about doing a comparison um, on usage between the wrought iron anvil versus his uh, 4140 versions. I'm assuming the 4140s are going to be performing like a modern surf striking surface, whereas the wrought iron ones are probably going to have a different draw, like the feel of the metal moving on them is going to be different. Um, but that's something to look into in the future. Um, I will link into his video for that. It will be somewhere over there um, at some point. Um, so, yep, let's finish off the all-important nectar of productivity. Um, get the forge lit. Oh, I should probably show you the rebuilt forge. Um, so just let me get some of this stuff in and we'll move the camera over and have a look at the rebuilt forge and some of the detritus from the rebuild, which I'm trying to decide what to actually do with. Um, seeing as I'm planning on building another forge um, in the very near future and the refractory would actually make reasonable aggregate to lay in the bottom of the, um, the build and then put some um, high temperature refractory over the top of. Um, so, that's for the future, um, although, not the distant future, the refractory should be here 
early to mid next week. Um, so a few days and then it'll be getting our build on again. Uh, Alright, let me move the camera and we'll show you how the new forge looks. I'm using some sacrificial um, linings in that and I'll show you that. It's a bit of a risk, um, but I work in a very, very well ventilated environment. Um, so I don't see it as a major risk. Um, and whilst you don't see me working all that much, um, yeah, we'll cover that when I get there. So the sacrificial material I'm using is um, some high temperature fracks, which the heat from the forge really does melt down very quickly, um, so it doesn't last long. Um, I've lined the floor, which is actually the original floor, just the brick turned over. Um, with some more fracks just to give that a bit of extra life um, and when those get too saturated with slag and flux then um, I can just quickly whip this out, um, whack in a new lining and um, keep going. Um, so this is what happened yesterday, the burner tip finally started flaring quite recently um, and it's just gradually put stress on the bricks and it's basically spalled out the roof, which is where most of the, the melted slag has come from, is actually the melted roof of the forge. Um, I'm using these little extensions just to give a little more um, depth to the, the forge itself, just to make it a little more efficient, um, give me a little more working depth. I don't know how that's actually going to work. I've not really tried that. I've put a couple of bricks on the sides just to limit the amount of wind disturbance and so I can close up the opening a bit if I really want to get to welding heat quickly. Um, we'll see how this works because I'm not going to be able to scoot them in as easily. Um, so that's an experiment. We'll see how that works. Um, I have to move some of this junk. Um, I'll leave this stuff here because it's not going to matter that much. Um, so yeah, let's get things hot and um, we'll get underway. That extra piece of steel that's in the uh, forge at the moment is going to be cut so I can get this piece off, which is going to yield materials for the rivet for the uh, tongs. is working in the dragon's breath.
they're a bit long actually. Cut off a bit too much.
one done, we'll make the other one suit that one. Damn it, got my hammer. got an idea of what you're doing, it's actually relatively easy. It's a bit easier than it looks.
lost that. Where does that leave us? It leaves us with the hammer yet to do for our set of two tools that we were planning. Uh, yes, the nibs aren't quite right, um, but otherwise they're quite functional. Um, I'll wear in. I need to uh, warm them up a little bit so I can give them a, a taste of hot oil. Um, Maybe tap on the, uh, the rivet just a little bit, take that little bit of slop out. But otherwise, there we go. First set of wrought iron tools I've made. Hope you guys enjoyed the journey. Um, I'd appreciate it if you subscribed. Oh, they're just a tiny little bit out, but the originals were also a tiny bit out in that axis. That's okay. Um, so. I would appreciate if you subscribed um, to keep up with my progress through this project. Um, give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Um, and yeah, feel free to share. Um, 
I will be putting a link um, to um, John Swipes's Black Bear Forge channel and his anvils from this collection. Um, that'll be down here, I think. Um, and um, yeah, do get out to your workshop, do have some fun, but do stay safe. Catch you next time.